Alright, welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. We're on episode 8 of Dreams of Eyes. Let's get into it. Probably gonna be a lot of story stuff.
On behalf of the Holy See of Ishgard, allow me to express my deepest thanks. Never before have we been required to contend with a prime. Indeed, there were fears in some quarters that our knights might not be equal to the task. From what we have now learned of these beings, I can say with certainty that we would have lost a great many men had the Scions not intervened. Then the argument for preemptive action should be self-evident. Perchance now you will reconsider my proposal that Ishgard move against Natalan. Ere we first met, a similar proposal was tabled, but the Holy See decreed that we were to observe and that military action should be taken only in self-defense. All things considered, it was not an unreasonable decision. Since the Calamity, two vigils have fallen to the Horde, while Garuda has never shown any inclination to storm the Gates of Judgment. Which is why this unprecedented crisis and its resolution may prompt a change in policy. You who have faced these primals know well the threat they pose. Ishgard did not. Not until now. And there is naught like a brush with death to change a man's outlook. At the very least, this should silence any lingering objections to our arrangement with Revenant's Toll. The Holy See may even feel moved to grant us its formal endorsement. So far as it is possible, the Scions shall be compensated for their service. We should be grateful for any aid you can provide. As a gesture of good faith, I shall withdraw my previous request. Your people are doubtless needed elsewhere. That will not be necessary. We too have a vested interest in watching Dravania's movements. I see. Once more, I must thank you. Sir Emmerich, if I may, do you truly believe that Midgard Zoma could return? The heavens are a window unto truth, but those who interpret their movements are not infallible. I requested your involvement as a precautionary measure. But of course! You sought an excuse to compensate us from the first, mindful of what would happen if Revenant's toll were taken by your enemies. Ishgard is not wont to aid its neighbors, but that does not preclude it from manipulating them to serve its own interests. Choose your next words carefully. Do you know what sort of man becomes Lord Commander of the Temple Knights? One who comes from good stock. I did not. Yet here I am. Now, why do you suppose that is? because I swiftly learned to tell the difference between words, deeds, and beliefs. You are correct, Master Leveo. Ishgard desires to see Revenant's toll flourish, as it would present a troublesome obstacle to our enemies from the south. We are so glad to be of use to you. As we are to you. Ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement, lest we forget. One born of necessity. The dragons grow more restless by the day, and the heretics harry us nigh without cease. We have contended with such troubles for centuries, but there are limits to even our endurance. Yet as a pauper is loath to part with his meager possessions, the leaders of Ishgard are not wont to render up their trust to outsiders. But, with perseverance on our part, they may yet be made to see the light. Nevertheless, one must take care when walking the road less traveled. Wise words, Sir Emmerich. I shall make a point to remember them. I must apologize for my earlier outburst. I hope it will not sour our good relations. Not at all. You but spoke from the heart. I trust you understand that at times my duties may prevent me from meeting with you.
on such occasions, my second in command will speak for me. Lucia, at your service. Pray excuse our reticence. We are but wary of speaking too freely, lest our sentiments be made known to our enemies. Know that the Lord Commander and I are of one mind. For the sake of Ishgard, and of Eorzea at large, I pray our peoples can put aside their differences. Those who dwell in the past risk losing sight of their future. Should aught befall one of our shipments, pray inform Lucia immediately. You may also relay to her any words you might have for me alone. Not being of Ishgardian birth, she owes no allegiance to any noble house, making her as near to incorruptible as one can find in my homeland. Suffice it to say, I trust her completely, and so may you. Which reminds me, Lord Orshafon, if you would be so kind? Certainly. In times such as these, trust is ever in short supply. Mayhap this will go some way to rectify the problem. The results of our investigation into the heretics' recent attacks, as well as our interrogation of the merchant you detained. Sir Emmerich, I cannot thank you enough. Think nothing of it. Ishgard may be many things, but it is no friend to Garlamog. Did I not tell you to have faith, my friend? Words cannot well express how glad I am to see you return to us hail and whole. Needless to say, I am most eager to hear your account of that which occurred in Curthus, assuming you're ready to speak of it. Excellent. I shall summon the others at once. Heart used her own body as a vessel for a primal soul? Master Louis Soir's writings make no mention of such a possibility. Can we be certain this entity was a primal? As certain as we can be that good King Mogomog the Twelfth was a primal, I should think. Both were ostensibly summoned. Let's not quibble over definitions. Of more concern is the implication that Iceheart retained her will, even after she was possessed. We are talking about a mortal, wielding the power of a primal. It can't possibly be that easy, can it? 
There must be some sort of sacrifice required. Or maybe she's just special? What qualities this woman possesseth, I know not. But full sure am I that she was groomed for this role. Few are privy to the secrets of summoning, and but a single party standeth to profit from their dissemination. Well, I wouldn't presume to comment on how the lass came to know about summoning, but I will say that what she summoned was a primal. The readings were the same, or near as damn it. Strange as it all sounds, it's really no different from what you've faced before. Then mayhap it is time that we re-examined our previous encounters. <gasps> Pack your things, Ida. We're going back to Gridania. Yes, sir. About Iceheart's final words to you. Hear, feel, think. Hydaelyn speaks to her as well. If Iceheart is blessed with the power of the Echo, she will doubtless have used it to further her goals. Or could it be that it was a revelation granted her by the Echo which first set her on this path? She did say that the Ishgardians were blind to the truth. Do you think she has knowledge of the origins of the Ishgardian Dravanian War? It would do much to explain her unwavering conviction. Did not the Lady Iceheart implore thee to seek the Keeper of the Lake? And did she not imply that in so doing thou wouldst come to see with eyes unclouded? Midgard Zoma was a king amongst kings who reigned for centuries on end. But he is dead and his wisdom lost to the ages. Unless the Ishgardians' fears are well founded. It would seem we have yet another reason to stand watch over the Keeper of the Lake. For our mercy, we are well positioned to do so. Iceheart, Shiva, Asians, and Midgard Zoma. I shudder to think how they're all connected. <laughs>